Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of You've Got to Hide Your Love Away that they did on February 18th, 1965. The song was 100% written by John Lennon, influenced by a Bob Dylan song, I Don't Believe You, She Acts Like We Never Met, because rhythmically the lyrics are the same. If I were to sing uh, Dylan's lyrics to John's melody, it would be, I can't understand, she let go of my hand, and let me hear facing a wall. So you see the similarity. Now the song is written in three-quarter time. You can feel it in six-eight time, whichever you prefer. And it was written at Kenwood uh, during December 64 to January 65 when John was trying to write a song every single day. Myth says that John wrote it about Brian Epstein, as the Beatles pronounce it. Their family prefers Epstein. Uh, but their manager, Brian, was a known homosexual, and homosexuality was illegal back in Britain in 1965, so Brian would have had to hide his love away. There's also a rumor that uh, John and Brian had an affair while on vacation in Spain, which they adamantly uh, denied. But Beale's biographer, Hunter Davies, says uh, John Lennon admitted to it off the record. Um, you know, John wasn't a homosexual, but you know, he was wackadoodle enough to try anything once, so who knows. But if you think about it, John was writing songs about himself back in those days. Like he wrote, I'm a loser and, and help. And even though he was on top of the world, for some reason he was depressed and insecure. My guess is that uh, he wrote, you've got to hide your love away about an affair he was having with a woman at the time. So February 18th, they're in the studio. Uh, they go in at 3.30. By 5.15, they're completely done with the song. They record live to tape. John on 12-string, Framus guitar. Uh, George on a nylon six-string. Paul on bass and Ringo playing brushes uh, on his snare drum. John singing live. They do nine takes. Take nine is the keeper. After they get done, uh, John decides to uh, overdub his vocal again uh, onto track two. And while he's doing those vocals, he incorrectly sings two foot small, but decides to leave it in because uh, he thought all the intellectually pretentious would really love it. Uh, they also overdubbed uh, Ringo on tambourine, uh, Paul on maracas, and George overdubbed another 12 string part uh, on the choruses. Now, this is the first time where the Beatles requested an outside musician whose name was uh, uh, Johnny Scott to play on a track. Uh, they had had Andy White play on one version of, uh, of Love Me Do, but the Beatles hadn't requested. But this time they wanted a, a flute on the ending, so they got a, you know session musician uh, Johnny Scott to come in, who was also a gifted arranger and had a, a, a nice jazz career uh, uh, afterwards. And he played a tenor flute live along with the track, and then he, he uh, overdubbed alto. I don't own a flute, so for my sound alike, you can also do it on a recorder if you play it like, um, uh, let's see. Sort of works. Fun facts to know and tell. Uh, John's friend Pete Shotton, who was the washboard player in the Quarrymen, was at the session, and it was his suggestion that John shouts on the hey, so uh, Pete Shotton should get a shout out. When you think about the song, if you think about it in three quarter time, verse one is 18 measures, verse two is 20. I believe the chorus would be 16 measures. So it's again a, a John Lennon composition with, you know, uneven numbered measures, but you still feel a perfect flow. It doesn't sound, you know, odd or, or forced at all. Uh, they mixed it on February 20th. They never played it live because Lennon didn't think it was very commercial. And it was released August 13th on the Help album, on uh, Capitol Records in the United States, and on Parlophone uh, in the UK. So I think that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his famous Hootenanny on You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. This is a 1960s famous uh, 76B model uh, that I got in Germany. Sounds pretty close. So you'll need these chords to play the song. You need a G, a D suspended, you need some other Ds. You need a regular D, you'll need a D add nine, you'll need an F add nine, You'll need a four string C. You're gonna need a five string C. And then you'll also need uh, on the D's uh, uh, D over C, which is uh, D over B, 
D over A. And those are the chords. So again, it's in three quarter time, or you could feel it in six eight, but um, the first two, uh, two measures in three four are, the, are, are a figure that he only plays at the beginning. So at the very beginning he plays, I'm gonna do this really slow so you can hear it. He goes like. And then on the first uh, measure of the verse too, that's the only time he plays like that. From then on, he, he cuts every measure kind of short, like by playing a, a downstroke, an eighth note, uh, or a quarter note, depending on how you count it, on, on the rest of it. Um, so a verse would be like this, very slowly. If you listen real close, although it's a suspended chord, on the last beat of a measure, John picks up that pinky. It's either to go to the next chord or he purposely went. Now we're to F add nine. Now on this part, George is gonna play a uh, F to an E, so that implies. But John isn't that concerned with this chord. Sometimes he's just strumming through it, it's just going from F to G. But you hear on the record, it sounds. So if you wanna make that four string C, more power to you. Um, so again, let me do a verse. It's very slow, I'll try to do the whole thing without talking this time. And here it goes. you'll hear some hammer on, more so from George's uh, nylon. And that's just picking up your first finger on the D chord and hammering from G to, G to A. John, again, doesn't seem to be that interested in that. He does it sometimes, sometimes he doesn't. On my sound alike, I'm just gonna do it when George does it, because I think it makes it cleaner. So um, that's basically uh, uh, how, how the, the strumming pattern is. Uh, charts and tabs will be at mikepacelli.com. I wrote out every single measure if you want to know exactly what, what John played. Second verse is just a little different. You know, there's more, more just downstrokes. Like at the beginning, it would be like. All downstrokes here. So let me play the second verse slow for you so you can hear it. That's the basic patterns of those first two uh, verses. Now, as I'll play it full speed for you, you see how it changes when you get up around, I don't know, 184, 182, something like that. Help me out, Ringo. So that's the tempo there when, when, when I'm playing in 6-8. So I'll play, I'll play the intro in a verse, two verses for you. There you go. Um, That's the first two verses. Just some great playing. I mean, you know, don't get too hung up on being precise with it because, you know, it was ad lib. Again, charts and tabs at mikepicelli.com. I wrote out every single measure exactly like John played it if you want to get it perfectly. Um, and then the chorus, pretty much just straight strumming again, except that uh, uh, a couple little notes. He first play a G, then, a, then single notes, G, A, B, to a C. And then this great figure with the D subs to D to D at nine. Up to 
tempo has a whole different feel. So up to tempo. <clears throat> Some serious, serious fun strumming. And again, if you want to know it perfectly, um, charts and tabs at mikebutelli.com. And the only difference is, uh, it's not really different at all, just different strumming, and they end on a G chord at the end, even though the flutes end on, a, I think, a D. So, you know, the last, uh, the last uh, flute outro thing would be... Um Just really, really uh, fun to play, and uh, now you see how John Lennon did it. George Harrison is playing his uh, nylon string Ramirez on You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. This is a uh, nylon Garcia, made in 1970. Now, George is playing the same chords that John is playing, and for the most part, the same patterns, but he's he's being a little more precise with the with the little hammer-ons and the walk-downs. So, like at the beginning, um, George plays this. He plays it. so like on the G chord, you take your first finger and hammer from uh, D to E, and then the verse starts. Now on these Fs to C to G, George plays a single F note, then he hits the E. And a D. So that measure on the C. Another one of those hammers. Hammers from D to E off the C chord. To the F. Oops, sorry. A G. Very, very. You can hear that very prominently, I should say, on the uh, from on the D chord, playing open uh, G to A. Second verse. I'm sorry. All right, another hammer. When he gets to the walk down, he plays the same thing that John did. So let me do that for you in tempo so you can see how it feels in tempo. All right. On to A. On the chorus, played exactly like uh, exactly like John. Again, charts and tabs at mikepicelli.com. I wrote out every single verse, uh, uh, I said measure, I should say, of uh, what George played. And again, on the end, you know, just ending on a G chord. So the last, the last bit of George's nylon, where the the flute's playing, it's just three, four. So 
he's really not uh, doing the hammer-ons on that last flute thing out. He's just kind of freely strumming out. And, you know, great part. No doubt George probably learned it right there in the studio that day. And uh, he does an exemplary job as usual. George Harrison overdubbed another 12-string part on the choruses. Now, in order to do that, you'll have to tune your E string down to a D. There's a, there's a good possibility, I should have mentioned this earlier, that Lennon's guitar was tuned down a whole step too, and he capoed at the second fret to play this song because the strings really sound loose uh, on, on John's part. But uh, I was a little too lazy to do that because it's just a bear keeping these 12 strings in tune. But anyhow, when you tune down your six string to D for George's part on the chorus, you play this. I'll play it very slow. So you just get on the fifth fret of the sixth string, open uh, fifth fret, uh, I'm sorry, open fifth string, second fret, open fourth string, third fret of the uh, A string, fifth fret of the sixth, second, and then play a suspended figure. Just such a nice addition, right? And in time, let's do it in time. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Ringo. Once again, George Harrison just shines through with an absolute perfect part. One, two, three, four, five. Here I stand, head in hand, turn my face to the wall. If she's gone, I can go on, feeling two foot small. Everywhere people stare, each and every day. enjoyed that and I suggest you learn all the parts play along with my sound like and you'll get it just like the Beatles if you'd like to drop me a line do so at mikepacelli.com that's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for you to download and if you would be so kind please subscribe to this channel and most importantly have fun when playing these old songs because that's what playing the guitar should be all about I'm Mike Pacelli until next time thanks for hanging out with me <laughs>